Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury and Bulldog Nation and everyone who's interested in the law, this is a continuation of our series on the law called Eric Dieter's The Law. And these are educational lectures on topics that I know. I want all of you to know that while I'm looking at where the teleprompter is so it looks right on screen, there's nothing running. I do this all off the top of my head. I'm proud of that because it comes off better. I don't have to read a speech. I don't have to read an outline. And I think that you're going to, it gives me more credibility and it's a much better presentation. Now, this video is probably going to be a little bit long, but there's good reason for that. It covers a subject matter called medical malpractice or medical negligence. I can assure you that if you're someone who thinks you might have a medical malpractice case, watching this video is going to be an incredible thing for you to do to help guide you. Again, this isn't legal advice. This is educational information. Everybody knows that I'm a retired lawyer. Doesn't mean that I can't give lectures. And also remember that I was tempted to monetize these, but consistent with Bulldog Nation, I do everything for free. I'm insane. Anyway, <laughs> but I do that because, quote unquote, my people don't have money. Now, my producer has done a great job of helping with the outlines, Josh Wentz. So let's get started. As in every legal matter, facts matter. So what a lawyer does is they take the facts of your situation and apply it to the law that they know. What this lecture is going to do is to tell you what you need factually and tell you what the law is. Now, medical records are the core thrust of a medical malpractice case. What are What is contained in the medical records of the hospitals and the doctors that treated you? That includes your primary care physician's records, who referred you to the orthopedic, the orthopedic's records, the hospital where the orthopedic doctor did the procedure, then all the follow-up records of the treatment post-surgery, all those medical records. And when we say medical records, we also mean radiology. Now, something that Dieter's Law used to do, and Drake Law still does, is this. We ask you to write down your testimonial out of the gate. We want to know what the facts are from your own words. Some people do it really nice. Some people's brief based upon education. I always joke, do it like it's your high school term paper. What happened to me at the doctor's office? Give us the facts. Why is that important? So those facts can be put in context with your medical records. Now, let me tell you something else about medical records. Just because medical records say something doesn't make it true. Oftentimes, the doctors, nurses will document something that the clients say, that, that's not true. I didn't say that. But anyway, you got to get the medical records. Also, the billing records. The billing records are very important for two reasons. They will reflect what medical treatment that you had, and they will also help establish possible damages. And we need to know whether Medicare, Medicaid, or private insurance paid those bills because they have what's called a lien on it. You can't make this up. If you pursue a medical malpractice case and you are successful, you have to work out with your own insurance company or Medicare and Medicaid payback of what they paid on your bill. So if you just get hurt, you don't have a medical malpractice case, you don't have to do that. But if you got a medical malpractice case, it takes money out of the hands of a, uh, a, a patient, which really sucks. Now, before I move on to the next subject, because uh, I, I know I didn't put this up here, when you hire a lawyer, this is very standard, lawyers charge more on a contingency fee basis and a medical malpractice than a car wreck because it's more risky. It's usually 40%. However, I've seen a lot of these law firms, not Drake Law, not Dieter's Law, they charge 50% or they say 40%, 50% if we have to file a lawsuit. Bullshit. They know they got to file a lawsuit. If they're charging you more than 40%, you might want to look at a different lawyer. But it's more than 33% because car wrecks are wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Medical malpractice cases are a little more complex, but it's medicine and it's facts. Okay, this is the standard for a medical malpractice. 
deviation in the standard of care for that health care provider. What was the deviation in standard of care for a nurse, for a doctor? for a radiologist, and it is a national standard. I can assure you that there's not a different standard of care for an orthopedic doctor or a cardiologist in Cincinnati and LA. The standard of care is the same. All right, next subject. Um, you have to prove your case. And this is really important. Lay people don't understand this. You have to prove your case based upon a reasonable degree a medical probability. That means greater than 50%. Greater than 50%. People think this all the time. Hey, uh, in the Durrani cases, we've had this. Hey, could this been caused by XYZ? It's not speculative. You have to prove it by the weight of the evidence. Tip the scale. You also have to prove that it proximately caused harm, which means it caused harm. Let me give you an example I love using. This happens all the time. Get a phone call. Hey, Bulldog, I got a pharmacy gave me the wrong medicine. I was supposed to get clonopin. They gave me this, and I took it. Uh, were you okay? Yeah, nothing happened. Sure, it's negligence, but you weren't hurt. If you're not hurt, no case. And one of the most important things in a case is your expert. You have to have an expert in any state in the country for your medical malpractice case. That expert needs to be in the field that you have. In other words, if it's a cardiologist, you want a cardiology expert, not an ER expert. And that expert has to review all the facts and say, based upon a reasonable degree of medical probability, Dr. Johnson, the cardiologist at St. Elizabeth Medical Center, was negligent, and it caused harm. Now, in Ohio, very interesting rules. By the way, I know medical malpractice like no one else. Why? Because of the volume of cases we do. Dieter's Law, now Drake Law, has more medical malpractice cases than any law firm in Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, probably in the state of Kentucky and, or Ohio, maybe even in the country. Why? Because of Durrani litigation. But we have other ones too. All right, now this is real, real important. In Ohio, your expert has to have practiced uh, in that field, and it used to be spend at least 50%, it's, you got to spend at least, not used to be, it is, 50% of your time in that field. They recently changed the rules that is at the time of malpractice. So let me give you an example. If you're a board certified orthopedic and the malpractice happened in 2020, and you were at the time, that guy could be your expert. If it's 2023 and he no, and he no longer has his medical license, he could still be your expert. It's at the time of the malpractice. That's a new rule. Now, how much time do you have? This drives me crazy. People don't act quickly. They wait around. Oh, I thought it was two years. This is how much time you got. You have one year from when you knew or should have known there was malpractice. In other words, it was so egregious. This is a famous, uh, I'm going to tell, I'm not going to use the client's name to embarrass them. But this is a famous case in the Durrani litigation. I mean, this is, of the 500 plus clients, this is a famous one. We had this client um, who is, for lack, of, for lack of a better word, you know, is like, you know, irrational and bombastic, okay? Not well-educated. And we say, hey, listen, you got to calm it down. And we, we warned him. We warned him about the statute of limitations and said, hey, it's one year when you knew or should have known. You know what he said in his deposition? As soon as that surgery was done, I knew something was wrong, and I wanted to punch Durrani in the mouth. Guess what? Lost his case. <laughs> Lost his case. You know, he knew right after the surgery. Now, let me tell you something sneaky that the medical profession is trained to do. They train them in this in seminars. You know what they do? They say what you need to do is tell your patients it takes time to heal up. So let's say a week after the surgery, they're not feeling right. You feel like something's wrong. Oh, it takes time. It usually takes six months to a year. Why do they tell you that? They want to get it past a year. 
They want to get a pass here. Here's my advice to you folks. I don't care what it is, when it is, when the malpractice happens. Your gut tells you something. Send me an email and I'll get it to the lawyers. I'm telling you folks, you don't want to wait. You can screw up your case. Now, this is the tragedy of the greatest proportion, the statute of repose. Let me tell you what the statute of repose is. The statute of repose says this, no matter when you find out, about your medical malpractice. See, let me give you an example. No matter when you find out, if you don't file the claim within four years of the event, your SOL, that's Ohio statute of repose. You ready for this? A lot of states like Kentucky have found that unconstitutional. But it's not unconstitutional, Ohio. Why? Well, because they have a Republican Ohio Supreme Court. You see how stupid that is? Unconstitutional in Kentucky constitutional. Why is it unconstitutional? It cheats somebody of a claim. Now I'm going to tell a little story that's worth hearing from you uh, to explain this. One time this lady comes to see me and she says, I had open heart surgery. My life was over. I lost my business. Everything was wrong. After 10 years, my cardiologist retired. I went to a new cardiologist The new cardiologist walks in her room and says, I hate to tell you this, you never needed your open heart surgery. Can you imagine that claim? 10 years, never knew. So when did she know? She didn't know until 10 years after. I'm as excited as hell. What a whopper of a lawsuit I have. An unnecessary open heart surgery. File the lawsuit. Feeling good about myself. This is when I found out about the Ohio statute of repose. I didn't know about it before then. So I filed this lawsuit. There's a motion to dismiss the claim, citing the statute of repose. I'm like, what? What's this all about? I look at it, okay? And I'm, I'm stunned. That judge dismissed that case. Think of how wrong that is. You know what the excuses they say on the statute of repose? Well, we gotta have the cases over at some point in time, blah, blah, blah. Now, there's a lot of Durrani victims that also lost their claim based upon a statute of repose. How evil is that? They had no idea there was malpractice until they hit the fan. He was arrested. So people start, maybe I ought to look at my records. It is so wrong, so wrong. If you live in Ohio, your Ohio legislators passed that law, your Ohio governor signed that law, And your Ohio Supreme Court has found that constitutional. That is crooked as hell. So you're at Ohio, you got to get moving. All right. In Ohio, you have to have an affidavit of merit before you file your lawsuit. Sometimes you can get an extension of your expert, which says everything that I already mentioned. In Kentucky, you don't have to have an affidavit from your expert, but the lawyer has to swear that they reviewed it with an expert. The complaint, the lawsuit, the lawsuit is actually called a complaint, which is filed. It's prepared and it's filed in the county where the malpractice happened. Okay. Lack of informed consent. Besides medical negligence, another claim that you often have is they failed to properly inform you of what was going on. Now, this has got all kinds of angles to it. First and foremost, when you go in the hospital, they will shove in front of you for surgery a consent from the doctor and the consent from the surgeon. Nobody ever reads it. And in that consent form, you're consenting that you might even die. Okay? Now, the fact that you sign that doesn't help any if there's a problem. However, it is rebuttable. In other words, just because you sign that form doesn't mean that they properly informed you. So if you sign that form and your testimony is they never told me about that, you can still win your case. But lack of informed consent is a big, big issue in medical malpractice cases. Uh, it is in the Durrani litigation because he's doing unnecessary spine surgeries. All right, battery. If they don't give you proper consent and you allow them to do the procedure, you have a classic civil battery claim. It's like an assault and battery. They touched you and they shouldn't have touched you. You can get punitive damages for battery because it's an intentional tort. All right, bad result. 
This is the biggest issue when it comes to medical malpractice, really. Just because something bad happened to you does not make it medical malpractice. Why? They informed you of the risks or it is a recognizable risk. Here is an example. If you have gut surgery of any kind, nicking the bladder is a common problem. It's not malpractice, just to let you know. That's an example. A bad result isn't malpractice by itself. Next up, what you think. <laughs> I want you to tell your lawyer what you think, but guess what? What you think isn't malpractice. Do you know how many times somebody came to me and I said, God, this is a great case. Show it to a doctor and a doctor says no. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> Treating doctors are very important. Um, here's another thing. With, I would say, now you, you can't make this up. I'm 60 years old. I've been a lawyer since I was 21. I would say over the course of my career in medical malpractice cases, every hundreds of times, the client says, Dr. So-and-so says that doctor screwed up. I would say over my career, two or three times only, has the treating doctor that said that to you testified against the doctor who screwed up. I believe you that they said it, but they don't put it in their record and they won't testify. See, finding an expert locally, it is extremely hard to find a local expert against the doctor because they're in the same neighborhood. You always got to go outside the area. Here's what I always did. You start in Ohio and Kentucky and you go out. You don't want an expert from California if you can avoid, avoid it. Great story. Medical malpractice defense lawyer once did this to me. By the way, this is funny because they use California freaking lawyers defending Durrani. Says it all, doesn't it? This defense lawyer, who's really good, says, while you're considering this case, I want you to imagine why Mr. Dieters had to hire an expert because when I went out and took this deposition, I had to fly over Kentucky, Missouri, Kansas, Colorado. I'm sitting there going, God. <laughs> Guess what? We do that now to the Durrani defense lawyers. <laughs> but it's really hard to fight. Now, this is pretty damn awesome. Our first radiology expert in Durrani was a radiologist in the Cincinnati area who testified against Durrani. Badass. By the way, guess how many doctors in the whole Cincinnati area have testified for Durrani? None. You ready for this? I love this guy. I nicknamed him the cowboy. You hear me talk about him all the time. His name is Dr. Charles Melman. He's been at Cincinnati Children's Hospital for nearly 30 years as an orthopedic doctor. Dr. Melman has never been sued for malpractice. Dr. Melman started complaining about Durrani at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, and they didn't do anything. They chastised him. He finally, through his efforts in part, Durrani left Children's Hospital. Dr. Melman got picked on by Cincinnati Children's Hospital. He has sued Cincinnati Children's Hospital for what they've done to him. It's still pending. You can't make this up. You talk about a, a medical hero. Dr. Charles Melman, a current pediatric spine doctor at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, who has sued them for picking on him about the Durrani situation, has agreed to be our expert against Cincinnati Children's Hospital in all of our cases. One went to trial before this big settlement. He, got, he took the stand, told the jury everything that he knew. The jury's mouth was like looking at each other, looking at each other. They didn't ask him one single question. The defense didn't ask him one single question. After Durrani left, Cincinnati Children's Hospital's orthopedic revenues were down. The finance guy comes to the orthopedic groups and bitches at him. Melman raises his hand and he says, the reason why our numbers are down is we only do necessary surgeries now. Sad, but true. And that's something else. All right. Who are the defendants? Any medical provider. It could be a tech. It could be a nurse, a doctor, or the hospital. Now, 
This is something you need to know. It's called vicarious liability. Anybody who's empl- the employer of a doctor, a nurse, or a tech is also liable. A practice group, the hospital employs them, whatever. Now, if a hospital does not employ the doctor and the doctor does a procedure there, the only way to hold the hospital liable is something through called negligent credentialing, which means they never should have credentialed the doctor to do there, or negligent retention. They found out stuff about Dr. Durrani that shouldn't have happened. Are you ready for this? That case that I told you about that we won against Cincinnati Children's Hospital that Dr. Melman testified at, you ready for this? It is the only case in the history of the state of Ohio where a hospital has been found liable for negligent credentialing and retention. Guess how many lawyer seminar places asked Fred Johnson, Alan Statman, and I to come talk to them? Zero. Guess how much news coverage it got across the state? Zero. All right. Here is what malpractice is. It's negligence. It's the same. We all, all of us owe a duty to everybody else in the world. That duty is to act right under those circumstances, not drive crazy. It's a duty. It's a breach of the duty. It's an injury causing damages. Now, some of the examples, failure to diagnose. You take your kid in for pneumonia. I've had a case like this. You take your kid in, um, uh, your baby, and they they misdiagnose pneumonia. They send you home and your baby dies because they didn't treat the pneumonia. Failure to diagnose. Medication error. You're allergic to morphine. They give you morphine. I had a case like this. You're allergic to morphine. You got the band on. This client had the band on. I'm allergic to morphine. They gave her morphine and killed her. Radiology. They tell you uh, you're fine on the CAT scan, the MRI, whatever. They say you're fine, and they miss a cancer. You go back, you miss a cancer. You know what Durrani does? You know what Durrani did on radiology? This was his modus operandi. Is you uh, you get a, you get an X-ray, a CT, MRI of your back, and it says the radiologist puts my stenosis. That's the narrowing of the canal in your back where your spinal cord goes through. It narrows. So you get tingling in certain limbs, depending on what level it is. That stenosis is closing in on your spinal cord. Mild stenosis. Guess what? With mild stenosis, you don't do anything. Durrani would say to the clients and tell the primary care physician, despite what the radio, she has severe stenosis. We got to do surgery right now. or They're going to be paralyzed. That was the main thing that Durrani did. All right, what else do we have here? Um, medication error, I've already covered already. Unnecessary procedure. That's a big thing. Folks, I want to tell you something. What's going on today in corporate health care? Every doctor friend I know admits this. This is sick. This is sick. All the hospitals in the Cincinnati area own physician practices. Sainese has Sainese physician groups. They started this a long time ago, and now it's really bad. You know what they do? They monitor each physician to see how much they're referring, how many people they're referring to the other practice groups. Hey, Mr. Primary Care Physician, how come you're not referring 10 cardiology cases a month to us? Driven by corporate health care money, not does the person have a heart issue. Famous story. I. I got to tell this, this, this story is unbelievable. My dad was one of the owners of Covington Trust Bank. Them and the Conrads bought Covington Trust Bank back in 1978. And, uh, you know, I got to listen to all the stories. Uh, there was a doctor that wanted to buy a boat, this big boat. And my dad tells me that the, they, the, the loan committee thought they, they were overextended, that the doctor was overextended and couldn't afford this boat. Too many toys, he said. You know what the doctor told the loan committee? He says, all I got to do is one more knee replacement a month and I can pay for my boat. So that doctor was going to do that. Now, here's something. And I'm sorry, Dr. Krimchek. I had a case against Dr. Krimchek where he did a, uh, a surgery on a knee and it was all video graphed. My expert was the Seattle Seahawks orthopedic doctor. He says to me, he goes, 
That was a completely unnecessary knee surgery. Can't make this up. Um, Kremchak, to his credit, wanted to settle. The defense lawyer did. Real prick. All right? The biggest mistake I've ever made in picking a jury. I left on a UC biologist thinking that that would help my case. By the way, I've never made this mistake again. Ever. When in doubt, you kick them off. You don't, you don't play QC with nurses. Anybody in the health field, you get them up. He, he cost me that, that win that that juror did. He was the foreman, and he cost me that win. But here's my point. Do you see the advertising of Beacon Orthopedics? Do you see the advertising? They've created a monster system. What do they need? Patients. Hospitals now send you ads, email, direct mail pieces. Do you got knee pain? Don't we all? Do you got back pain? We live in an age of corporate health care. So be on guard when they rep, they want you to have a surgery. All right, surgical errors, they screw up. Surgical. Let me give you an example of this one. My brother Jed, who died of cancer, God bless his soul. I wanted to go to university. Was it my spouse? You know, I, I couldn't do it. They go to St. E's. They take out the cancer, right? Um, days later, infectious disease doctor says, um, I smell crap. They nick the bowel. The surgeons got all pissed off that infectious disease. Why are you telling me to nick the bowel, nick the bowel? My brother never had a follow-up surgery to correct the bowel problem. He couldn't get the treatment that he should have gotten, and he died. Nobody wanted to sue. St. E's, by the way, I'm, I'm telling you right now, folks, you go to St. E's for a significant medical situation, you're nuts. I'm just telling you. Nuts. They missed, they told my son that his shoulder was just uh, messed up a little bit. The next day, Colosimo said it's dislocated. They told me my shoulder was locked up, just moving around. Later that day, I had emergency surgery to save my arm. They, I mean, the things that they, they miss is unbelievable. All right, so you got diagnosis errors. They tell you that you got, this is the most egregious. They tell you you got cancer. They treat you with chemotherapy and you ain't got cancer. Contributory negligence. Um, that's when you do something that helps cause the problem. You know, they tell you, stay off your feet, and you don't. Assumption of risk. This is a, th these are tough cases. The bariatric surgery case, okay? You know, the fat thing? Oh, my God. There are so many risks to those bad cases. I, I don't think many of those have been won. Um, I know I wasn't able to win one of them. I stopped taking them. All right, minors. If... The medical malpractice is against a minor. That minor, you got to remember this. That minor has until uh, a day before their 19th birthday to file a claim. So if your kid's five and you think somebody screwed up and they're not 19 yet, you might want to check it out. By the way, don't be this person that says, well, I don't like to sue. Really? Really? Somebody does something, think about how malpractice affects your life, your family. I've witnessed these Durrani victims. It's destroyed their lives in pain. Folks, I'm going to knock on wood. I'm 60 years old. You can tell I'm pretty damn fit, aren't I? Tanned. Do you ready for this? I don't have one single problem health-wise. Mike's. Shock you. Blood pressure's perfect. I don't have arthritis in a toe. I'm not joking, folks. Not one health issue. Now, I know God can strike me dead tomorrow with pancreatic cancer. I worry to death about it. But I want to tell you something, folks. I want to tell you something, folks. These Durrani victims live in pain every single day. I hate a toothache. I hate an earache. I can't handle anything. So don't be... Oh, I don't like to sue. If they screwed up, guess what they got? 
malpractice money. Depositions. Depositions are used. Those are sworn testimony. If you bring a medical malpractice case, they're going to get all your medical records from the day you were born, all your high school records, all your educational records, all your employment records. Everything gets opened up. But don't worry about it. What matters is what happened to you. We've had people say, Eric, I was a heroin addict. Does that change anything? I says, the fact you were a heroin addict doesn't mean that Durrani should have done another spine surgery on you. You see, doesn't matter. The standard of care, you've heard re- beyond all reasonable doubt in uh, a criminal case. In a civil case, in a medical malpractice case, it's only the preponderance of the evidence. You tip the scales. A lot of times you have fraud in a medical malpractice case. Fraud, you have to uh, prove by clear and convincing evidence, including malice. Guess what? A lot of fraud victories against Dr. Durrani. Something else that's very important about fraud. We tried to argue with the Ohio Supreme Court that fraud should be an exception to the statute of repose, and they rejected that. Unbelievable. Pre-existing conditions. It is an important issue. Why? Because if you have a pre-existing condition, that might affect whether you got a good case or not. However, you ready for this? An aggravation of a pre-existing condition can be part of your claim. All right. uh, Burden of proof is on you. The burden of proof is on you and your lawyer to prove your case based upon a reasonable degree of medical probability by the preponderance of the evidence that there was proximate, there was negligence and proximate caused you harm. Permanency, very important. In Ohio, to get, by, by the way, I'm, I'm glad I thought of this. Just so you know, Kentucky, they passed limits and it was found unconstitutional. In other words, you can only get this much for pain and suffering this much. Again, Kentucky finds it unconstitutional. Ohio has limits. Limits. Your limit for pain and suffering is only $350,000 unless it's permanent to a major organ like your spine, and then you can get a million. Now, just think about this. Can you imagine being permanently in pain? And you only got a million dollars or 350000 for pain and suffering? Your Republican legislature and your Republican Ohio Supreme Court, Ohio, they're awful. Uh, damages. Damages include lost income, medical bills, pain and suffering, court costs, whatever. You don't get your attorney fees unless you get punitive damages Uh, in a medical malpractice case. Then the last thing I want to talk about damages is loss of consortium, love, affection, and services. If you're married and something happens to you, you have a claim for what's called loss of consortium. Folks, every time I do these, I always think I forget something. I'm sure that I did. However, I can always do a follow-up one. Remember, email me, eric at ericdieters.com. Text me at 859-250-2527. This is not legal advice. This is strictly educational. It's 100% free. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed giving it to you. I could talk for hours about this. This is long, but it's worth it. Anybody who might have a medical malpractice case, um, you need to look at this. Something that's popped in my head that I want to share with you is this. Uh, This was my policy at Dieter's Law. It's still the same policy at Drake Law. By the way, I finance these cases for him. Dieter's Consulting, that's what I do. But I want you to know that um, a lot of these lawyers, and this is sad, most lawyers won't take a medical malpractice case unless it's worth millions of dollars. I never did. I was was not that kind of a person. I I felt bad for people. Um, For example, if they leave a, a sponge in you during surgery, not worth a lot of money, but they ought, to, they ought to pay that. You would not believe how hospitals refuse to pay for things that are like, are you kidding me? You're going to make us try this case. Um, corporate health care is evil, folks. Believe it. But one of the things that um, you need to know is that you have to front the fees for these things. These other law firms. Experts. They'll say, we need $10,000 for this expert. What? Guess who fronts the costs? For Dieter's Law and now Drake Law. I do. I do. We've had a Durrani litigation. I love saying this because the Ohio Bar, Kentucky Bar, lawyers in this area try to paint me for the bad guy. 
And all the clients know that that isn't the truth. And I like to mock them what I do that they don't do. We have had in the Durrani litigation, Dr. Keith Wilkie, orthopedic spine, Dr. Stephen Bloomfield, neurosurgeon, and Dr. Uh, Sane, neuroradiologist, uh, Wilkie from the outset, Bloomfield and Sane when we started trying all these cases. These guys have to give depositions. These guys have to be flown in, flown in, to testify live at trial or do a video, review all these cases, trial after trial after trial after trial. And who's made those arrangements for them to do that, for these Durrani victims? Me. So when somebody tells you that I'm a crook, <laughs> I'm a son of a bitch. He's an asshole. Blah, 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 blah. Really? Really? I would like to ask any lawyer that tells you about me, pick, pick up a copy of the Butcher of Pakistan. Read that. Read the prologue. And ask them, have you ever done anything like Bulldog did there? My credibility with average Jane and Joes is very important to me. I don't give a damn about the country club set. I care about you. I care about you. Remember how we got the Saney's billing fraud case. Valerie Rose called all the, like 20 lawyers in Northern Kentucky. They didn't even call her back. Now I got to, I'm involved in a case that I think is a billion dollar case. A billion dollar case. Lawyers wouldn't even call her back. I always respond. So that's my plug. Medical malpractice. I know this game. Even though I'm not a lawyer anymore, guess what? You go to Drake Law, I get to help on your case. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. Have a great day.